Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, what a state of affairs at Chelsea Football Club, oh my god, it's never a boring day at this football club is it, and this is why I've told you guys, if you want to be a Chelsea supporter, you need to have good health, you need to be able to have no heart conditions, no high blood pressure, no diabetes, no, 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 no. you got any of that? No, sorry, your application to become a Chelsea fan has been refused because you won't be able to cope. You just won't be able to handle it on and off the pitch. Off the pitch, we've got ownership situation, bidders here, bidders there, late bids. I mean, it's gone bonkers. And on the pitch, we seem to can't finish a sentence, let alone a dinner, let alone a goal. So, um, yeah, it's crazy times at Chelsea Football Club. But we're going to get into the nitty gritty. We're going to get into what went down yesterday, plus the development since, because there has been development since, and not just in terms of yesterday evening, but today as well. On top of that, this is your Everton versus Chelsea preview, as Frank Lampard faces Chelsea for the first time since he got sacked by Chelsea and left the Chelsea job. And um, yeah, Thomas Tuchel versus Frank Lampard for the first time. Everton fighting relegation. Tuchel trying to work out which team is going to be best for the cup final. Chelsea realistically are favourites by a mile but can't seem to finish and hit a barn door. Everton played very well against Liverpool and are literally on survival mode. So this makes a very, very good game uh, for the neutral. For Chelsea fans, we don't know what's going to show up. And we're going to get into all the detail in the second half of this video. For the first half of this video, let's clarify what's gone down over the last 24 hours. Because yesterday... I gave you guys a video explaining what had gone down with Jim Ratcliffe making a late 11th hour bid to buy Chelsea Football Club for 4.2 for 4.25 billion as a whole package fee. Um, and since that point onwards, since I uploaded that video, it's come out that Todd Bowley has been selected as the preferred bidder by the Rain Group, and he's beaten Sir Martin Broughton, Sir Stephen Pagliuca. So. If we didn't have this whole Jim Ratcliffe situation happening as of yesterday, we would right now be going, Todd Bowley will become the new owner of Chelsea Football Club. Done. Finished. Game over. But this is Chelsea Football Club you're talking about. This is EastEnders on steroids. This is a soap opera, and this is how we do. This is this is this is this is how we live our lives as Chelsea, as Chelsea, as, as Chelsea, as Chelsea management, as owners, as players, as as fans. We like to live on the edge. This is what we do. And so now, it's not actually done, done, done. Even though it's looking pretty good for Todd Bowley at the moment, but let's get into the detail. What has happened today? What's the information? What's the latest? Let's get right into it. So, the Times have reported Bowley is chosen as the preferred bidder. An official announcement is expected to be made by the Rain Group by Monday. And I have to stress this because I've seen a lot of people um, say, oh, Todd Bowley, he's got it, that's it. He's a new owner. He's not. <laughs> he's not. He's the selected preferred bidder by the Rain Group. Normally, with this whole process and what has happened, normally... We'd be going, yes, it's done. It's finally over. It's not. It's not over yet. Um, and we're going to get into the nitty gritty. What I do want to say is Todd Bowley, I'm actually really happy. I'm really happy that we finally have a preferred bidder. And it's Todd Bowley. Because in terms of Martin Broughton, Pagliuca, Ricketts, all of that, Todd Bowley was by, by a mile and a half the best bid on the table. Without question. So... At the end of this, I'm pretty sure Chelsea, regardless, are going to end up in good hands and are going to end up with an owner that is looking to try and take Chelsea to the next level. So in terms of the future of Chelsea, which is what my prime concern was, I'm not worried at all now. I'm not worried at all. But this race isn't over. So let's get into what is uh, what is going on because... Uh, yeah, it's, it's chaos at the moment. Here's Ben Jacobs with the latest and a pretty, pretty descriptive thread. Here it is. A little more detail on a dramatic 24 hours in the CFC cell. The Todd Bowley-led group is the preferred bidder and will enter into a short exclusive period, believed to be one week, to sign a purchase agreement. As of Friday, exclusive talks had not started and exact terms must be agreed. Picking a preferred bidder had to be concluded first and Rain and Chelsea only formally did this yesterday. As with the first round, the rejected suitors were informed first. 
Um, Pag Lucas plans for renovating Stamford Bridge lacked a clear roadmap and no written confirmation of if how he planned to scale back Atalanta was provided. A public statement reaffirming his commitment only provided more questions. Broughton's bid required partial funding via loans, discounted against the bid in a decision based on fine margins. The celebra ce what is that? The celebritization I can't say that word. <laughs> the celebritization as one rain source put it, of the bid wasn't well received either and was seen as a move to turn the sale into a popularity contest. That's a weird vocabulary. But above all else, Bowley's bids just stood out. One of the reasons why is because in each area, suitors were asked to focus on the group provided real experts. The bid is a collective effort with Clear Lake, the majority owner, but a range of impressive voices inputting. Bedad Egbali is pretty hands-on and engaged. He's a big football fan also, but Bowley, as minority owner, plans to assume day-to-day -day control. Johnny Goldstein and the support of David Hickey really impressed Chelsea. As previously reported, the Bowley group always had the strongest and most detailed plans for the redevelopment of Stamford Bridge. They have been confident for weeks of winning. Jim Ratcliffe's last minute £4.25 billion bid took Bowley and the two failed suitors by surprise. Ratcliffe initially expressed interest in March but then decided not to formally bid. Last week he then saw a window of opportunity as the sale dragged on. Interestingly, sources tell me Ratcliffe bypassed Rain and by dealing directly with Chelsea was confident in entering the race. He has not to date been told his bid is too late but Chelsea will prioritise Bowley meaning Ratcliffe has, lost, has a lot out of his control. Two other points which are key. Ratcliffe bid isn't astronomically higher than Bowley's since price includes charitable donation. And Ratcliffe, like Pagliuca with Atalanta, must address his ownership of Nice. That makes completing a CFC sell in days, as he says he can, unlikely. Ratcliffe's offer clearly puts pressure on Bowley to wrap up the sell quickly. And it's clear Chelsea and Abramovich, who failed to agree a price with Ratcliffe in 2019, are open to abandoning the formal sell process and considering rogue bids if it doesn't work out with Bowley. But to again reiterate, Bowley is the preferred bidder and the group is confident that Ratcliffe's offer won't affect anything. They have always said if selected, they see no reason why they can't complete the sale before Chelsea's special license expires on May 31st. That's a lot of information to take in. Um, but it's clear, as of Ben Jacobs, that we have this license expiring on May 31st. So we've got a month to wrap this up. Now, it's clear Bowley, the whole process... You can't undermine the process. The process is the process. But Rain Group was involved with that. What Ratcliffe has done, Ratcliffe has gone straight to Chelsea. He's not contacted Rain. He's gone straight to Bruce Buck. Here's the offer. Boom. On the table. What are you saying? This is basically like if someone is interested in buying a house, right? And he's interested in buying a house. He goes to the estate agent and he deals with the estate agent right? And they come to some sort of an agreement with, you know, certain commission added in for the estate agent. They're going to take their piece of the pie. And they're now talking about, okay, we're going to talk about handing over the keys and getting all the paperwork done. And then someone, someone else, say me, right? I come in and I go to the owner. Screw the estate agent who gets in touch with the owner. I know who the owner is. I go straight to the owner and I go, yo, your house for sale, right? Here's an offer. Cash. Take it or leave it. What are you saying? That's basically what's happened <laughs> on a much more astronomical level, on a bigger level with Jim Ratcliffe. So, yeah, this is really, really interesting as to where this is going. But there's more info. So let's check this out. So Jim Ratcliffe's last minute bid for Chelsea has received serious consideration. Todd Bowley remains on course to buy the Blues, but there would be nothing to stop Chelsea bosses striking a deal with the Ineos chief. So Jim Ratcliffe's bid for Chelsea has not been ruled out and was sent directly to the club and not the Rain group. Rain were unaware of the bid after announcing Todd Bowley's consortium as their preferred bidder. That came from The Athletic. The Athletic understands Jim Ratcliffe's bid went direct to Chelsea, not Rain. The bank appeared to be unaware of the details of Ratcliffe's bid hours after the US business papers had crowned Bowley as champion. The Athletic understands Jim Ratcliffe only decided to enter the fray this week, but has moved quickly to get himself in a position to what he believes is the most compelling offer. For example, he has spoken to the British government, which has a veto over this sale. And that is key. The British government are involved in this, remember. So this has to get government approval in the end. With all due respect, I think Todd Bowley has a very good chance with that consortium. 
had it not been for Jim Ratcliffe coming in in the way that he's done. Jim Ratcliffe is a Conservative Party donor. <laughs> he has been for a while. He's friends with them. It, this is going to get interesting. What I personally think is regardless who wins, I think Chelsea are winners here. If we end up with Todd Bowley, we've got good investment back in him. And that's going to be key here. We have to understand that. Clear Lake Capital are the big boys in this consortium. Clear Lake Capital are the ones coming with 60 billion worth of assets. Todd Bowley isn't. And this is a point that I want to get onto very, very quickly. Um, because we now have... Well, Simon Phillips says this. Let's check this out. It appears that the race to buy Chelsea is not yet completely over. Or at least as clear as Todd Bowley has won. Think Jim Ratcliffe still has a decent chance, personally. I don't think he goes into these things unless he thinks he has a very good chance. Interesting days ahead. So it's a race between the two now, I reckon. This is key. It is currently still unclear how much money Wiss is actually making available. According to Blick information, his share is likely to be lower than that of Bowley. What is clear, however, is that neither Wiss nor Bowley will chum in billions like Roman Abramovich did, who saw Chelsea as his toy. Gone are the days where money wasn't an issue at Stamford Bridge. Now, I stress that because Todd Bowley's consortium seems like a very good and well-equipped consortium. And the plans that they have are fantastic. Clearly, Capital are the ones with the money, though. They are going to be the majority owner if Todd Bowley were to get it. Todd Bowley will become a minority owner. Todd Bowley is worth £3.5 billion. That's his worth. He's not worth 17, 18, 20, or Roman. Roman, I think, was worth 14. He's worth three. Wiss is worth less. Clearly, Capital, who are backing Todd Bowley, are worth £60 billion. That is it. But they are the majority owner now. This is the whole thing about a consortium, which I hope doesn't go wrong. I hope doesn't go wrong because Todd Bowley will be managing the day-to-day -day operations of Chelsea Football Club. But he will be relying on Clearly Capital to keep to their word or put investment in and, and put the money in. Todd Bowley can't put the money in. He's going to rely on Clearly Capital. Wiss is going to rely on Clearly Capital, a private equity firm, as to whether they are going to put this money into the club. I hope they do. I hope they do. Um, and this is this is where I'm, I'm a little bit... Uh, this is why I didn't want to consort him. For this very reason. But if they do keep their word, Chelsea are fine. If they if Clearly Capital do put investment in as they are intending to, we have nothing to worry about. We'll be fine. Um, and I hope, they keep, I hope they keep that word. And I hope they do. And I hope Todd Bowley is allowed to keep the day-to-day -day operations of the club going as he would like with Clearly Capital just putting the money in. That would be nice. Um, but... Chelsea can avoid all of that if they entertain this Jim Ratcliffe bid. And the British government have to make an approval. So Todd Bowley has won in terms of being the preferred bidder. But the race isn't over. The race is now a two-horse race, just as we thought it was over. It's a, a two-horse race now between Todd Bowley's consortium, who has gone via rain, and now the decision sits with Chelsea. Todd Bowley's going to be meeting Roman Abramovich, apparently. That will be, you know, a key. But now you have Bruce Buck, who's already spoken with Jim Ratcliffe. So it's back to a two-horse race, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll see who's going to get it. And we'll see who's going to get approval. The good thing is for Todd Bowley is that now he has five to seven days of exclusivity to get a purchase agreement done. Um, and everything to be agreed with Roman. And if that were to go through, I think he will end up acquiring the club. If anything delays, yeah. Jim Ratcliffe has a big shout. So we'll wait and see what happens. But all I want to say is, if there were to be a rival bid to Todd Bowley, I'm happy it's Jim Ratcliffe. Because this is a bid that I would have considered from the beginning. If he had made the bid from, from the beginning, I would have gone, yes, give it to Jim. Because everything looks simple. Um, and in the same way Roman was in control with the amount of money that he had, Jim Ratcliffe will be exactly the same. So we'll wait and see what happens. But Todd Bowley right now on course. We'll see what happens over the next five to seven days. The next week is going to be key for Todd Bowley to try and wrap this up. And then we'll see what happens. But day to day, I'll keep you guys in the loop. Quick one. Let's get into Everton versus Chelsea as we do have a preview to discuss. This is a, a very, very tough game. Let's be real. This is going to be a lot harder than I think many are anticipating. Liverpool found it difficult against Everton. And Liverpool have quality. And Liverpool managed to go to that quality and get themselves a 2-0 win. Very reluctantly, though. Everton on the day, especially Gordon, who looked fantastic, were coming with a lot of grit. They are in survival mode right now. Everton, on the brink of relegation, are fighting for their lives. They know they have to put every single drop of blood, sweat and tears on the pitch for every game up until the end of the season. That is a team you don't want to play against. 
especially when you look at how Chelsea played against Man United. We dominated against a United team that looked like they did not want to be there, except for Ronaldo. <laughs> and we still drew. 21 shots and we only got one in the net. I mean, oh my God, it stinks, man. We can't score. And this worries me for tomorrow because Man United didn't look like they wanted to be there. No intensity, no urgency, nothing. They got a result though. Everton are going to come all guns blazing because they don't have a choice. And Chelsea do not have that intensity. Even though Chelsea might be coming into this game going, all right, lads, yeah, come on, we got to, we got, we got to give it our all. They won't give it their all. Even though they think they're giving it their all, their all is what they gave against Real Madrid. And that comes from within. That comes when your back is against the wall and you haven't got a choice. That's human nature. So I'm not blaming Chelsea here. I'm just saying this is human nature. We are built like this. When, when we are put into survival mode, you know, fight or flight, and if you understand some sort of psychology, you'd know where I'm going with this. That's where inner strength that you don't know you have comes out. Everton have that. Right now, they ain't got a choice. They need to go all guns blazing, full on attack mode. We have to win this game. We're, if we have to die on this pitch, we're going to die on the pitch. Chelsea will not have that mentality. Chelsea will go professional. Chelsea will be going, all right, lads, we're going to get this win. Come on. But Everton are going, come on, come on. We are going to win. You know, th there's some things you can't beat. <laughs> you know, Chelsea will be having that in the FA Cup final, I would hope. Backs against the wall. It's a cup final. You've got to give it everything. We'll wait and see. But this game will not be easy. Um, and tomorrow, I'd like to think that Tuchel tactically will outwit Frank Lampard. I think we will have control. I think we will dominate the game. But, but, Lampard will want to prove a point. <laughs> and I think he's going to psych up his plays. I think this game is not even going to be that tactical. I think this game is going to be pure heart. Who's going to run the most? Who's going to go in for every challenge? Who's going to go for every for every header? Who's going to go for every second ball? Who's going to try and take as many chances as possible? Who's going to be the bravest? Who's going to be the strongest? Who's going to be the fittest? Who's going to be the fastest? I think it's going to be a purely physical football match. Because that's what Lampard and Everton are going to bring to the table. So, we need to try and kill the game early. <laughs> I say this every week now. But... With the way that we've been doing things, the way we can't score goals, it worries me for tomorrow. It worries me. Because had we played Everton early on in the season, I think I'd be like, yeah, we'll win. Tomorrow, though, at Goodison, crowd are going to be behind them. Uh, ah, Matt, it's, I don't want to play Everton. That's how mad it is. I do not want to play Everton. Because I know what they're going to bring. And and uh, do not be surprised. The lineup for tomorrow is very, very hard to, to try and decide on. Let's get into it. I've gone with the same team, basically, except for Chalaba, uh, for Aspilicueta. Um, and I normally pick by player. But, look, this was basically the team that played against Man United. And they still couldn't score. Oh, well, they, we scored one. We, scored, we should have scored about six, but we scored one. I look at the bench and I go, okay, we're we going to play Pulisic? Are we going to play Ziyech? Are we going to play Lukaku? Here's the thing. Tomorrow, as I've said, I think this is going to be a very physical game. We need runners. We need, we need players that are going to keep going for 90 minutes, basically. We need to try and outrun Everton, out-demand Everton, out... What's the word? Out-fight Everton. We need to try and do that. Um, and that way, hopefully, they get tired. So I've gone with this team, who I think are the athletically athletically the most capable. Um, some, I would debate Mason Mount being on the pitch. I'd rather a Ziyech, for example, if we're talking creativity, football ability... I don't think it's going to come to that tomorrow, though. I think it's going to come to who's going to go and win and fight the ball most, who's going to try and play the ball most, who's going to try and, and give everything going forward. It, runners, who's going who's going to have the strongest press, who's going to have the strongest counter press. Who's? I think it's going to be purely physical. So I've gone with basically the same team that played against Man United, um, except for Chalaba uh, uh, replacing Aspilicueta, who I feel can bring some energy to the defence because Christensen's going to be out. Um, Kovacic is still out. Kovacic would have been perfect for this game. He would have been perfect for this game, but he's out. I turn to this team. But again, I'm worried that they won't score. This is my concern. <laughs> I'd like to think they will, but... It's up to the lads. Put the ball in the net, lads. Put the ball in the net. Anyway, that would be my start in heaven. And my score prediction, um, I don't even know. 
Realistically, we should be going to Goodison. Oh, no, I've done this against United. I'm not going to do this again. No, 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 no. I said realistically, we should be winning three 0 right? But then I'm not. Well, I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised if Charity FC. That's what I said against United, and that that is exactly what happened. We should have won five 0 and we drew one one, right? So uh, for this game, I don't know. I'll say. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and reverse it. I'm gonna say it's gonna finish one one. Go on, Chelsea. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Go on, Chelsea. Get that win now. <laughs> I hope it works. I hope it works. Because right now, I don't know what will get these players scoring goals. I don't know what will get these lads scoring. I really don't. So hopefully we go out there and, and we start we start being clinical. We start putting the ball in the net. Because we should. And if we are, we will win tomorrow. But Everton, Lampard, their, their circumstances, they're going to come for a fight. We better be ready. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about tomorrow's game, about the whole ownership situation. You got a long video today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit the like button. Much appreciated. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button if you are new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash like button, as I've said. Watch along tomorrow for the game. We'll be starting at about 1.40 p.m. My, uh, UK time. Kickoff is at 2. So make sure you guys are here. I will be doing the live watch along. And then after that, I will upload my match review for all of you. So I hope to see all of you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. See you then. Take care and peace.